So we know how enzymes work. Enzymes take their substrates and convert it into their products. And that's what enzymes do. Enzymes catalyze chemical reactions, taking substrates and converting it into products. So this reaction has a certain velocity rate. And we define the velocity rate of this reaction by knowing how many moles of products are made per second. For example, if this reaction makes three moles of products per second, then this reaction has a velocity rate of three moles per second. One second goes by and three moles of products are made. But now let's do another experiment. So let's say we have one experiment where we have an enzyme concentration of one nanomolar, but a substrate concentration of three micromolar. So under these conditions, we'll have a certain velocity rate. We'll have a certain amount of products made per second. However, what if we did another experiment? So what in this other experiment, we had the exact same enzyme concentration. We have the same enzyme at the same enzyme concentration. However, in the second experiment, we have a higher substrate concentration. In this experiment, we have a substrate concentration of 10 micromolar. What would we expect? Well, if we have a higher substrate concentration, we'll expect a higher velocity rate. We would expect more moles of products made per second. And that makes sense because if we have a higher substrate concentration, we have a more likely chance of that substrate binding to the enzyme to be converted to products. So if we have a higher substrate concentration, we have a more likely chance per second for products to be made. And if we were to do both of these experiments, we would see that the velocity rate under this substrate concentration would be one micromoles of products made per second. However, if we increase the substrate concentration to 10 micromolar, we would have a velocity rate of five micromolars per second. More moles of products are made per second. And that's something you should get familiar with. As you increase the substrate concentration, you increase the velocity rate. You increase the rate at which products are being made. But now let's do another experiment. So now let's say we had a huge substrate concentration. Let's say we had a substrate concentration of 100 micromolar. So under this situation, we would expect a very high velocity rate. We would expect lots of moles of products being made per second. Because if we have such a high substrate concentration, it's very likely for a substrate to bind to the enzyme to be converted into products. So we would have a high velocity rate of maybe 40 micromolars per second. 40 micromoles of products are made per second. But now what if we did another experiment where we increase the substrate concentration from 100 micromolar to 101 micromolar? So we slightly increase the substrate concentration. Well, under this situation, we would still have that same velocity rate of 40 micromolar per second. 40 micromoles of products are made per second. Why? Well, because this particular enzyme at this enzyme concentration, once we have a 100 micromolar substrate concentration, the enzyme is saturated. We have such a high substrate concentration that the enzyme is saturated. So even though we increase the substrate concentration, the velocity rate is staying the same because this enzyme at this enzyme concentration has already become saturated. So therefore, we know this particular enzyme at this particular enzyme concentration has a Vmax, a maximum velocity rate, at around 40 micromolar per second. So we know maybe we could increase the substrate concentration even more to 150 micromolar. Well, again, the velocity rate will still be at 40 micromoles per second because this enzyme is already saturated. So this max velocity rate we refer to as the Vmax. It's the maximum velocity rate of this enzyme and this particular enzyme concentration happens to be around 40 micromoles per second. However, we could also characterize this enzyme based on its Km. So every single enzyme has a Km, but what is a Km and what does the Km tell us about the enzyme? Well, the Km is simply a substrate concentration. Specifically, the Km is the specific substrate concentration that gives us half of the Vmax. So we know the Vmax of this enzyme is 40 micromolar per second. So therefore, half of that Vmax would be 20 micromolar per second. So now you might wonder, what is the particular substrate concentration that will give us half of Vmax? What is the particular substrate concentration that will give us 20 micromoles per second? So now we would have to do a lot of experiments with a lot of different substrate concentrations, but with enough experimentation, maybe we would find out that if we have a substrate concentration of 25 micromolar, we would get a velocity rate of 20 micromoles per second. We would get a velocity rate that was half of the Vmax. So now we know the Km of this enzyme is 25 micromolar. That's the particular substrate concentration that gives us half of the Vmax.
But who cares? Who cares about this can? Who cares about the particular substrate concentration that gives us half of the Vmax? It seems so arbitrary. Well, this CAM can tell us something very important. For example, let's say this enzyme has a KM of 25 micromolar. However, let's say a completely different enzyme has a KM of 1 micromolar. What does this tell us? Well, that tells us this enzyme requires a substrate concentration of 25 micromolar to reach half of its Vmax. However, this enzyme only requires a substrate concentration of 1 micromolar to already reach half of its Vmax. So therefore, because this enzyme has such a low KM, that means it requires a very small substrate concentration to reach half of its Vmax. So that tells us that this enzyme has a high affinity. It requires a very small substrate concentration to reach half of its Vmax. So therefore, the lower the KM of an enzyme, the higher the affinity. So these are two really important characteristics of enzymes. We can determine what the Vmaxes of the enzyme at a particular enzyme concentration, and we can determine what the KM is of the enzyme. So now let's visualize this. Let's say for this particular enzyme, for this hexokinase enzyme at an enzyme concentration of one nanomolar, we can essentially graph this, where essentially we have one axis as the substrate concentration and one axis as the velocity rate. So we could take any particular substrate concentration and determine what the velocity rate would be. So we could do some experiments. For example, let's do experiment one. And let's say in this first experiment, we have a substrate concentration of five micromolar and let's say at this particular substrate concentration, we get a velocity rate of 7 micromoles per second. When we have a substrate concentration of 5 micromolar, we produce 7 micromoles of products per second. That's our velocity rate. So we could graph this. We could graph this. At a substrate concentration of 5 micromolar, we get a velocity rate of 7 micromoles per second. So this dot represents this first experiment. So now let's do another experiment. And in the second experiment, let's keep the exact same enzyme concentration. So we want to keep the enzyme concentration constant. We don't, we don't want to change that. However, let's increase the substrate concentration. Now let's say we have a substrate concentration of 20 micromolar. What would we expect? Well, we know if we have a higher substrate concentration, we would expect a higher velocity rate. We would have a higher chance of the substrate to bind to the enzyme to be converted into products. So we would expect more products being made per second. So we would expect a higher velocity rate. And we see that is as we increase the substrate concentration, we increase the velocity rate to 20 micromoles per second. So at a substrate concentration of 20 micromolar, we get a velocity rate of 20 micromoles per second. So this experiment is represented by this dot. And now we could do another experiment where again, another experiment where we increase the substrate concentration. And as we increase the substrate concentration, we would expect the velocity rate to increase. And we see that we see the velocity rate has increased. So at a substrate concentration of 40 micromolar, we get a velocity rate of 26.6 micromoles of product made per second. So again, this experiment would represent this dot. So we could keep on doing these experiments. Another experiment increasing the substrate concentration even more. And we know as we increase the substrate concentration, we will increase the velocity rate. So as we increase the substrate concentration even more, we increase the velocity rate more. So maybe at this particular substrate concentration, we get a velocity rate of, we see, around 35 micromoles per second. So this makes sense. As we increase substrate concentration, we increase the velocity rate. So we could keep on doing these experiments. So now we have a very high substrate concentration. Now we increase the substrate concentration to 80 micromoles molar. So now, because remember, we've kept the enzyme concentration constant. And in every single one of these experiments, the enzyme concentration has been one nanomolar. So yeah, as we keep the enzyme concentration constant, but as we increase the substrate concentration, eventually this enzyme at this enzyme concentration is going to get saturated. So yeah, we increase the substrate concentration to 80 micromolar, but now we see the velocity rate only increasing very little because the enzyme is starting to get saturated. So at this particular substrate concentration, we see a velocity rate of 37 micromoles of products being made per second. And now we increase the substrate concentration even more to 100 micromolar. And now the velocity rate has again increased very little. So now the velocity rate is only 40 micromolars per second. So at this particular substrate concentration of 100 substrate concentration, we get a velocity rate around 40 micromoles per second. So we see this graph is starting to level off. Originally, as we increase the substrate concentration, we increase the velocity rate. But now as we increase the substrate concentration, the velocity rate's only increasing very little. And now, so at a substrate concentration of 100 micromolar, we got a velocity rate of 40 micromoles of products being made per second. But now we increase the substrate concentration to 120 micromolar. We see the velocity rate is staying the same. We see now we increase the substrate concentration even more, 
But as we increase the substrate concentration to 100 micromolar, we see the velocity rate has stayed the same. It's still at 40 micromoles of products made per second. So we see around this substrate concentration, the enzyme has been saturated. This enzyme at this enzyme concentration has saturated. So yeah, we could do another experiment with a high, huge substrate concentration. We could do another experiment with a substrate concentration of 200 micromolar. But the velocity rate will still be at two, at 40 micromoles per second because this enzyme at this enzyme concentration is saturated. So now we can kind of complete this graph that, that we've been, this graph that we've been making and now, what can we determine from this graph? Well, we can see as we increase the substrate concentration, the velocity rate is kind of leveling off at 40 micromoles per second. So we can determine 40 micromoles per second must be the Vmax. It must be the maximum velocity rate for this particular enzyme and this enzyme concentration. So this graph, based on this horizontal asymptote, we can determine what the Vmax was. But not just that, we could also determine what the Km is of this enzyme. So again, what is the Km? Remember, the Km is simply a substrate concentration. Particularly, the Km is the substrate concentration that gives you half of the Vmax. So what is the substrate concentration that gives you half of Vmax? Well, we know Vmax is 40 micromoles per second. So therefore, half of the Vmax would be 20 micromoles per second. So at 20 micromoles, what, what, what substrate concentration will give us half of Vmax, will give us 20 micromoles per second? Well, now we can just simply see based on this graph that at a substrate concentration of 20 micromolar, we get a velocity rate that's half of the Vmax. So now we know the substrate concentration that gives us half of Vmax is 20 micromolar. So now using this graph, this Michaelis-Menten plot, we're able to determine the Vmax and determine the Km, which is again, remember the Km is the substrate concentration that gives us half of the Vmax. So that's pretty neat. We can do a bunch of these experiments and determine some really important things about this enzyme. So not just that, we could represent this using an equation. This equation, the Michaelis-Menten equation, essentially will yield this graph. And essentially the way this equation works is if we have a particular enzyme at a particular enzyme concentration, as long as you know the Vmax of the enzyme and you know the Km of the enzyme, then you can take any substrate concentration you're interested in. You can take any arbitrary substrate concentration, plug it into this equation, and determine what the velocity rate would be at that substrate concentration. So that's the beauty of this equation. You can take any substrate concentration you're interested in, plug it in the equation, and determine what the velocity rate would be at that particular substrate concentration. Again, as long as you know the Vmax and Km. And we know how to determine the Vmax and Km using this equation. But again, that's the beauty of this equation. As long as you know any substrate concentration, it will spit out what the velocity rate would be at that substrate concentration. For example, let's say we have a substrate concentration of 40 micromolar. If we have a substrate concentration of 40 micromolar, what will the velocity rate be? How many moles of products will be made per second? Well, we can determine what the velocity rate would be using this equation. As long as we know the Vmax, as long as we plug in the Vmax, and as long as you plug in the Km, you can take any substrate concentration you're interested in, plug it into this equation, and it'll tell you what the velocity rate would be. So you could plug in these values and plug it in the calculator, you would get a velocity rate of 26.6 micromoles per second. So at this particular substrate concentration, you would get this velocity rate. And again, we saw this in our graph, but again, that's the beauty of this Michaelis-Menten equation. So